Howdy folks, this is Shane and I just got back from the United States and I wanted to share my thoughts on Guitar Center, which is a big music store chain in the United States. I'm an Australian and I've been to the United States maybe 11 times or something like that, maybe 12, I've kind of lost count. And I've been to so many Guitar Centers over the years that I thought, you know what, I think I can form an opinion based on li at least living overseas and my opinions on them when I travel to the US. I also wanted this video to be pretty interactive as well, so if you can, leave all your comments and thoughts about Guitar Center in the comments below. I'm not gonna flame Guitar Center, I think there's some good things about it, but I can also see some of their limitations and things that people might not like. This is just going from my personal experience traveling to the US. Usually when I'm in the US, I get a car and I travel between states. I did that last time, I went through four or five different states, sort of around the coast from Florida, all the way to New Orleans, so that was pretty cool. And I stopped off at a lot of different guitar shops, but I also stopped off at a lot of different guitar centers as well. So I thought, you know what, now's maybe the best time to go ahead and have a chat about it. I'd also really love to hear your thoughts on Guitar Center, so please leave some comments below as well. This is from my perspective, being an Australian, heading to America and checking out the guitar shop. So for people who live in the US, you might not see it as, as much of a novelty as what I might have seen it originally, so we'll get into that as well as we go. Let's do it. The first thing I need to mention is I'm actually a left-handed guitar player. So this brings me to my first maybe con of Guitar Center. I went into four or five around the coast between Florida and New Orleans, and they all had the same one or two guitars. There was either a Squire <laughs> left-handed Strat or a Mexican Telecaster in Sunburst there were no other guitars. This didn't change on my most recent trip in. They either had the Squire, same guitars last time, or this time it was a white Strat in just about all the shops I went into. So the range is pretty limited for a left-handed guy like me, which is kind of disappointing given how big the shop is. I remember when I was in Jacksonville, there was this big sign on the wall that said Lefty Land. They had two guitars. <laughs> it's crazy. I know I'm a little bit of an anomaly when it comes to playing guitar, being that I'm a lefty, but that said, I'm gonna look at it from a right-handed's point of view as well. If you're a right-handed guitar player and you walk into one of the shops, you're definitely gonna be in a bit of guitar heaven, at least coming from my perspective. In Australia, we don't have too many shops that are anywhere near the same size as say the San Francisco Guitar Center. It's absolutely huge. Even the Jacksonville one from memory was pretty large also. If you're into the big brand stuff like Fender, Gibson, Epiphone, Vox, all that kind of sort of generic stuff, you're definitely gonna find what you like. I'm kind of boring with my tastes in music gear. I tend to like Fender, Gibson, all those kind of things. You know, if you've watched my podcast, I hang it on Gibson occasionally, but I do like their guitars. Most of the time when I go to a shop, I'm pretty open-minded, but then again, I also know what I like. I know I like Fender amps and Fender guitars on the most part. There's plenty of other brands I like as well, but they're the things that I play most. So for me, walking into a guitar center, if I was a right-hander and seeing all of that collection of great guitars, I'd be in pretty much heaven. <laughs> I can see the flip side of this as well. There's maybe not quite enough unique stuff in each shop. A lot of the shops seem pretty generic. It doesn't matter if you go from state to state to state across the United States, very few of the stores carry anything differently in terms of new stock. This is a little disappointing and strange that maybe some stores didn't specialize in a brand that the other shops didn't. I know they're a big chain and they get deals on buying bulk and all that kind of stuff, but it would be cool if you could travel to one store or get stuff sent across and they just specialized in something a little bit different. I think that might actually help their uniqueness a little bit. Just carrying a lot of generic stuff in every shop isn't always cool. One of the great things about Guitar Center that I love is you can walk in and get whatever you want. It doesn't matter if you play bass, guitar, if you're looking for recording equipment, a sound card, daisy chain for power supplies, all that kind of stuff, they carry everything. This will generally mean if you're in a hurry to pick up something, you can essentially just walk into any of their stores and know that they'll have it. That's pretty cool. One of the downsides coming from an Australian perspective is you can't really haggle on the price of new stock at all. They seem to have the list price and then their sale price and there's not a lot of room to move it. This didn't seem to always be the case. I remember buying like a bag full of pedals from the San Francisco branch years ago and they actually gave me a discount off the price that was already on the ticket. I thought that was pretty cool. In Australia, it's different. You basically see that ridiculous high price and you can usually knock it down to a less ridiculous high price. So 
We do have a little bit of bargaining or bartering system in terms of shopping for guitar equipment and it's kind of expected. I wonder if removing the haggling process might have actually hurt Guitar Center in terms of sales. It's kind of almost expected that you're a guitar player, you walk in and you get a discount. At least that's how it is here. So that might just be a foreign thing, but let me know your thoughts on that as well. One of the cool things about the shop that a lot of people might overlook is if you play something, there's not that expectation that you have to buy it. It feels very different to shops here. If you play something or take something off the wall and they unlock it and all that kind of stuff, there's almost this pressure that you've got to walk out with it just because you've, you know, you've tested it out. In the States, it feels very, very different. I really like that about Guitar Center. The thing that I like best about Guitar Center and if they sort of develop this even more into their shop, they would absolutely just kill it is their used guitar department and amps, all that kind of stuff. So any used gear that they have is generally way, way cheaper and they won't have the same generic brands in their used department or guitars as they would have in their new department, which is awesome. The only time I've seen some really great left-handed guitars at Guitar Center were in their used department. This was several years ago and I was blown away by what they had. I was actually shocked. I thought, why don't they carry this stuff normally? That's the thing, generic brands, it can sometimes work and it sometimes won't. The difference was this time, these two Fender guitars that I saw were custom shop guitars in a lefty that we used and they were about half the price as what you'd pay normally, which was really, really good. I also heard that the longer something stays on the wall, the more the price drops. So if you hang around and wait, you can generally get a really great bargain. Just to put it in perspective, for anyone who's not in the United States right now, I went into a guitar center in Natick, which is in Boston, which is where this guy's from. And I went in there with Nick in the States and Pixie Licks, and Pixie was playing a Mustang 3 for about 120 bucks. It was a used guitar, but 120 bucks, and it sounded awesome. <laughs> Down in the Sarasota branch, I saw a 410 Blues DeVille, which is something that I don't see a whole lot of, and it was about 400 bucks. Something like that in Australia would go for eight or 900 bucks secondhand. It's an absolute deal. Their secondhand amplifier selection was just off the wall good and off the wall cheap as well. I think Guitar Center could have the potential to really corner the market if they chose to do more used gear. I just think it's great. Obviously, I'm not 100% certain of the actual profit and all that kind of stuff when it comes to used gear, but there's lots of great stuff in there. Everyone that I hung out with in the US said the same thing. Their used wall is always the best wall. Lastly, I really like what they've done with their acoustic section. It's sectioned off away from the electric guitars in a wooden floorboard room on the most part. It's got some couches in there and you can play acoustic guitar in a really great room, which is something that a lot of generic sort of music shops won't have. All in all, if you've been into one guitar center, you've essentially been into them all. There might be one or two that are a little bit different to each other or a little bit bigger and all that kind of stuff, but they essentially carry all the same things. So I can see kind of why they get a little bit of a bad name online. But overall, if you're into the mainstream brands, it's really quite cool. You can get almost whatever you want. Like I said, the disadvantage of a lefty is I always hear the same thing. Oh, we can get this, we'll just order it. Where are they coming from? I went from state to state to state. They all had the same stuff. So they must just have a warehouse full of gear that they'll then distribute to the shops on request. This last point is maybe the most critical and maybe the most important in my mind, being an Australian, knowing that we can't return stuff after seven days. If it's been used, we can generally only get a store credit. That kind of sucks. It does depend on where you shop, of course, and your relationship with the store, but shops aren't obliged to give you a refund if you're not happy. Compared to Australia, Guitar Center has an awesome returns policy. You can buy something, and if you're not happy with it after you take it home, you can bring it back for a refund, no questions asked, as long as it's not damaged, of course, or something like that. But the cool thing is they do offer that as something for the customer, and I think that's a great thing. If I owned a music store in Australia, I'd do exactly the same thing. I'm sure people would take advantage of that from time to time, but I really do think if something's in brand new condition and you're not happy with it, you should be able to just return it for cash. When I bought that Fender Mustang GT that I hated, I couldn't actually return it for cash. It sucked, I had the box and everything. Even though it was only a week later after I returned it, I could still only get a store credit. I think that's a little disappointing. Thanks for watching, my name's Shane. If I did miss any topic in particular or point about Guitar Center or I missed something that you might have experienced with it, please let me know. I tried to keep this as fairly unbiased and from my Australian perspective heading over to the US over the years, like I said, I've been there around 11 or 12 times now. Maybe over the last sort of eight trips, I've been into a lot of the music stores and I always 
sort of feel the same now walking out of Guitar Center. Wow, there's lots of stuff, but each one is pretty much like the next. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all soon. See ya.